Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back. We're here today. I'm going to be bringing you probably one of my favorite builds in all of Diablo. And it's the very first one I actually built when the game released. And that is Pulverize Druid. Okay. In Diablo 4 Season 3, Pulverize is still really, really strong. Okay. I do want to show you guys real quick. So I, I really, really thought that Overpower with Pulverize as well as some of the builds from Necromancer with Blood Surge, Blood Lance, as well as some other Overpower builds in the meta from last season. <clears throat> I heard that there was going to be a huge nerf and I was thinking, oh my god, they just buffed it and now they're nerfing it again. So a lot of these builds are going to suffer. No, not really. So this is the Overpower nerf that we got this season, this season three. So Overpower attacks now gain 1% instead of 2%. And they also gain 1% damage down from 2%. Same thing. Okay. It's all been, it's all, we dropped a percent. It's not that bad. Okay. It's not that bad at all. Okay. It's really, really not. It's, it's an okay nerf. It, it's still, trust me, it's still super, super strong. So we're in here at Pulverize. The build is very self explanatory. We are just going to smash things and deal millions and millions of damage with the build so let's go over everything that you need skills gear paragon board etc and then of course we're going to do a showcase of a t100 just for you guys because i know that's what you guys want to see so let's go over to the skills really quick and just break everything down now this build did change a lot so i always got to give a lot of credit to my community the warriors over here on youtube and just kind of like we always do a lot of theory crafting and we change a lot of things and test a lot of stuff out so this is kind of what we came up with in the end so we got two points into wind shear and we'll get back to wind shear in just a second because my variation here is not or this end game variation i should say not mine this end game variation i should say doesn't run a basic although you will have to run a basic but we'll talk about that more in a second then we're going to go down and grab pulverize we're maxing this thing out we're at 18 out of five uh down into primal okay enemies hit with pulverize deal reduced damage this is really really good especially just for farming t100s however if you don't if you feel like you're just already super tanky and it's not a big deal then i would just swap it out for raging enemies overpowered or stunned it's kind of cool but the consistent 20 percent reduced damage is just it's just easier it makes the build just really really good and you just don't you just like you're just a tank okay you're just a tank we're maxing out predatory instinct for crit strike chance against close enemies we're also uh, maxing out iron fur okay more dr then we're gonna come down to our defensive skills we're taking earth and bulwark into preserving because we want to be overpowering a lot all right we want to be overpowering so therefore we need to be able to fortify so we got preserving earth and bulwark for fortify we got blood howl uh down into um innate for just to generate more spirit we got debilitating roar down into innate debilitating roar for slow this is actually a key build or key skill like it's like an mvp skill in this build because not only does it fortify you but it slows everything down and when you slow monsters like as long as you get that cc you're going to deal a crap ton of damage the monsters need to always be stunned slowed immobilized doesn't matter then we got one point in ancestral fortitude for um resistance but into three into vigilance for damage reductions after using one of our three defensive skills now real quick i will talk about some some alternate changes that we'll make when we get to the gear section then we're going to come down we're going to take three points into crushing earth for more damage one point in safeguard for more fortify three points into stone guard for more fortify we got one point into mending uh into three points into provocation this is going to be one of our few ways to be able to overpower so while we remain in wear bear form for at least 16 seconds, our next defensive skill will overpower. Our next non-defensive skill will overpower, which is going to be pulverize. Then we got trample into savage trample, not only for mobility, but to gain back more spirit. Then we got one point into neural toxin into an venom. You and your companions gain 30% critical strike bonus against poison enemies. Now, what I do need to do is uh, we like we changed a few of the skills, but come down to ultimate we got three points of defiance for more damage two points into natural disaster for more damage as well as three points into renaissance for even more damage now a lot of this can actually change okay so um the way that we have it set it up is to be able to swap out skills but then we take grizzly rage 
into Supreme Grizzly Rage. And of course, our key passive is Ernstein Strength, just for even more damage. Now, you're probably asking, like, why am I not taking, like, the Increased Fortify, right? The Unconstrained, right? Like, like you don't need these. So, the extra damage here, because they are nature skills, is just really, really good. So, let's go over to the gear, and I'm just going to talk about uh, what changes that we made. But before that, let's do Spirit Boons. We're doing Wariness for 10% damage from Elites. We're taking Iron Feather for increased max life. The more max life that we have on our build the more that our fortify will become which means we'll do even more overpower damage when we overpower then of course we got avian wrath for more crit strike damage then we're taking bolster we fortify every time we use the defensive skill and then of course obsidian slam which is our second way in order to be able to overpower every 20th kill will guarantee an overpower now into our gear pieces okay so this is where we're gonna i'm gonna go over the gear pieces but this is where we're gonna talk about a lot of changes so I think this is pretty much my final version of gear. Okay, we have some changes that we're gonna do, but this is probably my final version. It just seems to flow the best. So best in slot, we have Shaco here, okay? Just for resource, max life, okay? The 20% the DR and then four ranks is just best in slot. Now, if you do not have best in slot, what you will look for is a regular helmet. You're gonna look for max life, cooldown reduction, total armor, and then whatever other one that you would like. So like resource generation is good. You could do all stat, you could do willpower. Any one of those is perfectly fine. Okay, if you don't have Shaco. Now, when we go to bossing, when we do bossing, we are gonna swap out for God Slayer. God Slayer is just gonna be better for just overall, overall raw damage output when we are bossing. So that's just an easy swap. Now, if you don't have Shaco, and you do have a God Slayer, then you are more than fine just putting this in here and you'll be fine. The build can run just as good. You don't even need to rock a regular one. But if you are low on your armor caps, then definitely have a regular one and just swapping God Slayers when you fight bosses. Next, Insatiable Fury. Okay, Werebear Form is now our true form. This helps us again stay in Werebear Form for up to 16 seconds so we get an overpower. Okay, and then of course, everything else on there is self-explanatory. Next, Urzine Horror in our gloves. Pulverize is now an Earth skill, and after casting it, we get Tectonic Spikes. Super strong here. You're looking for Willpower, Attack Speed, Overpower, Pulverize. Really, we would want, um, we would drop the Overpower and we would do Crit Strike Chance, but these gloves are really good. Next, to Bolt's Will, best in slot. Not only do we get the Unstoppable and gain back our Fury, or our, excuse me, our Spirit, every time we become Unstoppable, we do the increased damage. Now, we become Unstoppable from Trample, Earth and Bulwark, and Grizzly Rage. So we are unstoppable with half of our skills and with our next uh, legendary power, which is Ghost Walkers, while unstoppable and for four seconds after, we gain increased move speed and can move freely. So we are unstoppable for literally, when we pop Earth and Bulwark, we are unstoppable for seven seconds. When we have Charge, same thing, we are unstoppable for seven seconds. And then with Grizzly Rage, we're unstoppable for even longer than that. Okay, so our increased move speed, we are extremely, extremely fast. Next, we are opting for a two hand instead of a main hand and an off hand, just because we wanna do as much damage as possible. So this is where we put Shockwave, creates a Shockwave that travels forward, dealing 200%. Try to get a max one or get as close to max as humanly possible. The stats that you're looking for are all stat, willpower, overpower, and if you want, if you don't have core skill damage, because core skill damage applies to all, you can do um, increased crowd control damage. You could do um, crit strike damage. Um, you could also do damage to close. Well, all those are really, really good. I just found mine with core skill, so I kept it. Works fine. Now, um, my chat even asked me, like, why am I using a staff instead of a mace? Okay, because a mace innate's ability is overpower damage. A staff is increased damage to crowd control so the reason that i opted for that and i do have this one as a backup just to kind of swap in oh vulnerable damage is also a good one if you want to put it on your weapon because <clears throat> it, it scales multiplicative the reason that i like the staff is because it's it's more consistent damage right because crowd control we're always going to be able to slow them we're always going to be able to stun them we're always going to be able to you know apply some kind of crowd control effect to our enemies 
so the increased damage to crowd control is just a more consistent damage output now if you don't care about that and you just want to go more top end then using a mace is perfectly fine because that extra overpower damage when you do overpower it's going to be a lot but you'll see when we do the t100 that we're already just smashing enemies so like i have the mace as just to, you know just to kind of point that out but i prefer the staff it just works better for me but a, a, a mace is more than more than acceptable now we go into banished lords which is our third way of overpowering after spending 300 of our primary resource our next skill is gear our next core skill is guaranteed to overpower and we do increase damage super strong here so that we got three total ways to be able to overpower in this build next we got starless skies okay now i've been testing around with this this to me is just going to be best in slot not only are we going to get increased damage like crazy but we're getting 40 percent reduced um skill or resource cost as well as 40 percent increased multiplicative damage so pulverize costs 33 so when we reduce that by 40 percent it's going to be it's going to cost next to nothing and we're just going to be able to non-stop pulverize it's going to be insane next i opted for raw might okay raw might after you hit 15 enemies with your wear bear skills your next wear bear skill will deal increased damage and stun so the reason that i have the raw might on here as opposed to some other options that i'm going to give you is because of the stunning okay so when we smash everything on the screen and we stun everything it applies our crowd control we're going to be able to do even more damage now let's talk about some options and some changes to the build that you can make um if you don't have starless skies you can definitely come in here and take loop of natural balance okay this is really good casting a storm skill grants your earth skills increased crit strike damage earth skills gives you a crit strike chance on your storm skills we don't care about that it's just the first one after casting a storm skill you get increased crit strike on the ring you would look for a crit strike damage crit strike chance max life resource chance and then i know you're asking like well war you don't have a storm skill so if you do not have this setup what you would do is you would put in natural balance and then you would come in here and drop grizzly rage and you would just put uh your wind shear in here so then that way when you do this right and you go bang now you come back and you get the increased damage that's how you kind of how you would play it so that that's that's what i would do to swap that out uh, some other really good options if you do not want to or if you do not have starless skies because i know it's a very sought off um uber unique what you can also do is you can do retaliation do i have it in here yes you can do retaliation where your core skills deal up to 35 or 45 percent which really is 30 percent on a ring increased damage based on your amount of fortify now again retaliation is a more consistent damage so if you put that on a ring you're always going to be fortified no matter what so it's just a can it's it's up to 30 percent just multiplicative flat damage and it's just really really good like if i wasn't running starless skies i'd probably run that with this instead of natural balance just for more raw output another very strong option if you don't have that if you really want to uh, run it is uh rampaging werebeast if i can find it i thought i had one yes rampaging werebeast so try to get of course five seconds but the duration of grizzly rage is increased and then crit strikes chance have a is actively increasing your crit strike damage up to 200 percent so those would be the three ring choices i would suggest if you do not have starless skies just to swap out you pick whichever one you want they all work good if you want to run grizzly rage then i would run either retaliation or the grizzly rage skill if you don't want to run grizzly rage and you have issues with your resource management then run wind shear and just run natural balance and you'll be perfectly fine of course rubies and everything rubies in there for overpower and then uh skulls in your defenses here now let's get into the uh oh let me show you the shadow shell real quick because everybody asks flash of adrenaline it pretty much is the same minus some support stuff so adrenaline with duration tactical and safeguard and then we got tempest with efficiency resource and breaking okay for even more vulnerability now into our paragon board again all this is going to be linked down in the description below so for those people who are like just go over every single node that you picked for the paragon board because i can't seem to click a link and understand why you picked what you picked just click the build planner you'll be fine okay so we're doing wear bear more damage while in wear bear form damage reduction while in wear bear form then we're doing earth and sky 
Nature Magic Skills deal increased damage to crowd control vulnerable. It's always going to be one of those things. Then we got Dominate for more overpower damage. Then we're taking Exploit for even more vulnerability. And then, oh, invulnerability and invulnerability damage. Then we're taking Outmatch for even more increased physical damage to non-elites and bosses. <clears throat> and then we're taking Shapeshifter. Shapeshifting has a 20% chance to cause the skills damage to critically strike, which is really, really nice, okay? So uh, those are the six that we have. It's a really good board. Um, we are also gonna be taking a few of the legendary nodes. We're taking Survival Instincts for even more damage. We're taking Earth and Devastation for even more damage, which I need to get this up. Your Earth Skills deal, increased crit strike damage, increased by 20% of your uh, damage versus crowd control. We have that at 29%. We need to get that to 40, okay? So really what I need to do is re-roll core skill to crowd control damage, damage to crowd control enemies. So that would give me a lot more damage, okay? Next, after that, we come in and we grab Inner Beast. After shape-shifting, the spirit costs, your spirit costs are reduced by up to 10% for five seconds, up to 30%. This is really, really easy because right now we're only shifting, so like, We'll shift into human form from Earth and Bulwark. Then we shift into Werewolf. And then we go back into Pulverize. So we're going to be able to get the Spirit Cost reductions there. Which is really, really nice. So it just makes it even better. We can just infinitely spam. And then last but not least, of course, Ancestral Guidance. After spending 75 Spirit, we deal increased damage for 5 seconds. Super easy. Very, very good board. Now, a few things that I do want to touch on. Because we've had to kind of mess around with this. So I have my, my all my reses are maxed, okay? Now, if you take Starless Skies away, okay, the reses are not maxed, right? So you're gonna have to change, you know, the, the, the skulls out and just put in another Royal Diamond, but that makes the only swap. Now, also what you can do is, in the Paragon board, in the node where the Werebear one is, which is board four, I opted to come down here and grab just six, seven and a half, percent resistances so if you take these away right so and now we're down to this okay but if we take the two skulls out that's another 10 percent so you will cap these the resistances you'll be just fine and then in your paragon board you will have the extra four points to put wherever you want totally up to you, you can opt it to wherever you want to put it totally up to you there's so many there's a lot of different places to put it um, you can just figure it out. If you want to add more damage somewhere, you definitely can. Um, but right now, I opted to have that. So not only my resistances are all capped, I can put skulls in all of my stuff to have even more armor. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out in that board. So that way you guys can see that. Now, let's get to where everybody wants to see. Let's go ahead and do a Vault of Cinders. Let's go do a T100 because... For some reason in the Diablo community, if the build, if players cannot see the build do a T100, then therefore it is an invalid build. It sucks. Erase it. Get rid of it. Never play it again. So let's go ahead and go showcase on the T100. So that way you guys know that the build is actually good. All right. So how this build plays is pretty simple. We're going to pop um, Bloody Howl and Earth and Bulwark on cooldown. Trample when it's up to be able to move and unfortify. We smash everything. Debilitating Roar. Definitely try to do this on big mobs. And then you could do Grizzly Rage whenever you want. So, let's go. Yeah, baby. We're just Grizzly Rage right off the bat, baby. Suppression is a problem. We hate suppression. We don't care. I hate suppression so much. Let me grab that hood. Again, we are super fast. We're just gonna smash everything. Again, the build is, is super easy, right? The build is super easy. Now, I will tell you guys that Pulverize over these seasons in time has, it, it, it kind of struggles against single target damage like bosses to a degree. It can struggle. Get up off me, fool. What you doing? So there, there is that effect. Look at that, seven million, no problem. Is that, is that the way I'm supposed to go? We just smash everything on the board. You got, you guys see it. Like the build is, you know what I mean? Hey, back up, man. Let's just speed through this, dude. Leave me alone, monsters. 
The people of YouTube want to see the build. Okay? It's very, very easy, man. We're just going to smash through everything, right? Ugh! Get out of my way, baby. Big boy coming through. Again, we'll just grizzly rage it. Easy. Get up out the way. Big daddy's here. The bill just slaps. That was 24 million. Oh, baby, baby. They should play that song in the background. Uh, did I go the wrong way? No, uh, I think so. I think I did go the wrong way. Kind of. We are speedy. You can see that we're just super tanky. Not only that, like my armor isn't even 13,300. You can definitely get it to that if you really, really want. Again, you just rock the normal helmet and you do um, total armor in there. But we're so tanky that it's just really not gonna matter. We, are, we already hit the cap. Like we just have no issues, right? And again, if you look at, if you look, like I'm constantly fortified. We're constantly fortified. Our resource management is nothing right now. We just blaze through this, dude. Hey, back up, son. Super easy, man. Let's go, let's go rage, let's go rage up. Let's rage up, dude. Let's get crazy. Man, we just clear so good. The build is so great for just clearing large mobs. You know what I mean? Just clearing large mobs. You know what I'm saying? Just clear the large mobs. The build does just fine against bosses. It's just, it's a little bit slower. Now you can get this build to do a lot more damage if you really want. Like to me, I still think instead of raw might, I'd probably just rock retaliation, I think, just for more consistent damage. I just think it's better. But Raw Might is really nice. Getting those crowd control effects is super important. And just like that, man, we just clear. We just clear, it's like not even a problem. Not even a problem, no big deal. And again, guys, these are all with glyphs at level 15. It's no big deal, no big deal, okay? This is the very first build that I've ever run, right? With my Druid, it's the very first build that I really, really played. And I have such a fun time playing Pulverize. It still holds up to this day. No issues whatsoever. The build slaps. Okay. But yeah, guys, that's the showcase. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed the build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please like the video. Comment down below. Let me know what you guys think about Pulverize with the overpowered nerfs in Season 3 of Diablo 4. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, stay gaming. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.